Hi everybody. Here's a short video about some of the things that we were looking for when we graded the, um, the exam and also some helpful hints about how to solve these problems. Um, overall, what we're looking for in each particular problem is in order to get seven, better than you know six out of ten to get up into the seven eight nine range, you really needed to show that you had a grip on the underlying physics and um, of the problem. So in the first question, this is a remote controlled vehicle moves along a straight horizontal track and its position as a function of time is given by a function that depends on t and also t cubed. So we definitely do not have constant acceleration in this problem, which means that we have to use the definition of velocity, which is dx dt. And if you evaluate dx dt at 13 seconds and solve for t and use the positive root of that because you'll be taking a square root then plug that into the acceleration which is the velocity as a function of time and then you solve that um, for when the time is equal to whatever that t came from. In the second part of this, you actually did have constant acceleration. So you have a cart on a linear air track, and it starts at point A, and at some time t later, it's over here at point B. It covers this distance in 4.1 seconds. Its speed as it passes the second point is 0.6 meters per second. We don't know the speed here, and the acceleration is constant, and we don't know that either. Okay, so the acceleration is the same here and here. So, given this information, we can use this equation, which relates the position at two points in time to the velocity at two points in time, and you can solve for this one right here. Okay, that would be at point A. And then using that information we can find the acceleration. And so Vx is equal to V0x plus Axt. So we would put in the V0 that we solved for here, um, solve for this, and it's 4.1 seconds. And this Vx is this one over here. So it's just plug and chug on that particular problem. The next problem is the projectile motion problem and as always the way that I like to approach these problems is to draw a picture. We've got a stuntman jumps off a cliff. Some people were wondering if he jumps off a cliff is this a positive angle or negative angle but I've never seen anybody do that when jumping off a cliff. I'd imagine that's kind of hard to have a negative um, y component to your speed, to your velocity vector. So here, this is the initial velocity vector. The actual path, of course, looks something like that. So this is just tangent to the starting point. And this starting point is at a position of x0 is equal to 0, because it doesn't tell us otherwise. y0 is 7.5 meters above the water. Um, the water is down here. And you arrive there at 2.3 seconds later. And at this point, well, the other thing that we know is the angle of 49 degrees. Um, over here, the x position is not known, and y is equal to 0. So you want to choose an equation that relates these various things. Um, you want to use this equation, because it actually allows you to find the initial um, speed. So remember this is equal to v naught times the sine of 49 degrees. Okay, and so what do we do with that information? Well, what we do with it is to um, look at this component, which is equal to v naught x, which is v naught times the cosine of 49, and this is v naught y, which is equal to v naught 
times the sine of 49 degrees. Okay, and using this, um, we know that a y is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared, t is equal to 2.3, v naught y is equal to this, and you can solve for this. This is the initial speed is the magnitude of your velocity vector, which is that. And then likewise for the x and y components of the stuntman's velocity, his velocity when he hits the water looks like this. That would be you know, a vector that looks something like that. It has x and y components. Um, Vx is going to be the same as v naught x. Vy is going to equal v naught y plus a y times t. And again, a y, as always with projectile motion, is negative 9.8. v naught y is what you'd solve for here. And then you can find v y. The last part of the problem was where people had a little bit of difficulties. Um, let's just take a look at what these plots look like. Um, the sketch of x as a function of time, x Okay, so x is a function of time, x starts at zero and linearly increases with time. vx starts at some positive number and just stays at that constant number, so there's vx as a function of time. y as a function of time looks very much like the actual path through space that he travels. It's upside down parabola, so there's y as a function of time. And then the final one, vy, this was probably the hardest of the bunch. Here's time. It starts out positive, and it has a line with a negative slope. The slope is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So he starts up moving upwards, so he's got positive velocity. When he gets to the highest point in the trajectory, the velocity is zero, and then he continues on his way towards the water, which is a negative, um, the negative direction, and so you're plot looks like this, a straight line. Alright, this one was just taking some free body diagrams and um, so here the, the key word right here is that they are moving at a constant speed and the rope stays tight. So for let's just call this box one and box two just for um, clarity. And so here's the, you can draw a little dotted line if you want to indicate the ramp. Um, so the normal force is perpendicular to the ramp. There is a tension force. The rope is keeping box one from wanting to go this way. And mg points straight down. And um, if they're sliding down the ramp, there's also a friction force that looks like this also parallel to the ramp, and it, and it looks like that. So this is for box one. Box two looks very similar. The only difference is the tension force actually points down the ramp. Same tension as this, but in the opposite direction. It is, um, the motion is opposed by the friction force, which points up the ramp. The um, normal force looks like this, and mg is always points straight down. So there's the two different free body diagrams. The vector equations are just this vector plus this vector plus this vector. That's what Newton's laws say here. Constant speed means this. I was really looking for this with the arrows and everything. So what you would be doing in each case, let's just use this as a quick example. You'd have the normal force plus the tension plus the weight plus the friction force add up to zero. These are vectors. This is a summation. You are adding vectors here just like we did in the beginning of the course. The very last question on here says what would be different about your answers to parts A and B if the boxes were speeding up sliding down the ramp? There actually wouldn't be anything different about either of these free body diagrams. They would look exactly the same if they were speeding up. The difference in part B would be that the sum of the forces would equal ma and if they were speeding up um, heading down the ramp. The sum of these forces would equal ma. 
for this part, um, part two, I don't, I didn't want to see any breaking down of components. Don't worry about angles, nothing like that. I just wanted to see the vector equation. I want to, I want to see that you know how to use these arrows and to use them correctly, because that really is a critical part of you know, developing the mathematical skills to succeed in these rigorous mathematical majors that you have chosen. Um, the next one, the coin is placed on a horizontal rotating platform. There's two ways to look at this. Let's look at the first way, which is going to be just face down watching this coin go in a circle around and around. Let's not worry about the details because all these problems were more or less the same. If you have something sitting here and it's moving in a circle, that means it has a force due to something directed towards the center at each location on the circle. Okay, so if this is, if we're watching from above, then we see this. From the side view, you have an upward force due to um, the normal force, the downward force due to gravity, and then say we're over here, then at that location there has to be a force like this. So what we've done is just take this and look at it edge on. This is the force that is causing the circular motion, okay? So what we have is those three forces add up to ma, not to zero, even though it's moving at a constant speed, but it is moving in a circle, which means our acceleration is not equal to zero. This force equals this force, but in the opposite direction. So we have n minus mg is equal to zero, which leaves in the x direction the friction force, which is equal to m, and it's not just the acceleration, this is centripetal acceleration, mv squared over r, and then you solve from there. Okay, so for the last problem, this was an adding vectors problem, regardless of whether this was uh, people pushing on a cart or whether it was um, a picture hanging. Um, in some cases, the vectors added up to zero. In this particular case, the vectors add up to um, m times a, the mass of the cart, times the acceleration of the cart. So here's your free body diagram, f1. It's practically given for you here, f2. These are both vectors. And so the sum of these vectors is equal to ma. And you need to consider both the x and y directions in this particular problem. The, um, the y components add up to ma uh, in the y direction. The two x components are going to be this one of f1, and it will look like this for f2, and then the y components. So these are both going to be positive, so they add up, and they equal max. And then for this one, you're going to have this is your f1y, so it's 100 times the sine of 60. And for this one, you're going to have 140 times the sine of 30. So here, these two x components add up. The y components are this one minus this one equal may. So that's what we were looking for on this problem. And then you solve, you can find the, um, the acceleration vector that gives you the velocity vector and then you're done.